Hello everyone, this video is another one that goes with the article on the Flowering Elbow website. It's all about green sand casting and lost foam casting and the relative advantages and disadvantages. So here I'm going to be making a lost foam pattern. And that was how I cut the lost foam on the table saw. This is how I make little circular insert bits I'm about to stick onto the foam pattern. So you just heat up a tube and then you can use it to make nice little circles really easily. The bandsaw is another great tool for making foam bits and bobs. Uh, this one I'm just cutting like an inside uh, curve on these little joining pieces that are going to form some webbing to go between those circles you just saw me cutting and it's also slightly angled in order to meet the circle divots and I'm just cutting that kind of freehand just by lifting one edge up slightly and trimming it It's not an exact science, I'm just marking the approximate sizes going with that and you can kind of push them together when you come to fit them. Back on the table saw, foam's so soft you can even make freehand cuts like this. Um, half the problem is that the saw blows the foam, it's so light. So it's always best to use some kind of fence or ideally a cross-cut sled that you can hold the foam down to. So we've got our two little bits that we just free-handed. One of them's just going to fit in there. The other one's going to fit in there. Tight angles on. Let's get a little bit of glue on them. And the glue I've been using is just some leftover glue that I've got. It's 10 minute set wood glue. And I don't know a great deal about its characteristics when encountering molten aluminium. It doesn't say about that on the spec sheet, unfortunately. Um, but my experience has been that it seems to work quite well. It doesn't do anything crazily funny when being vaporised by the aluminium. And it does quite a good job of quickly holding the foam in place. So now I'm just sticking down the circles you saw me cutting out with the hot pipe. And here's the bits I cut on the bandsaw. Well, the bandsaw and the table saw really. I ripped them on the table saw. They were cut to length on the bandsaw. So they had a sort of semi-circular edge to meet with the circles and this is how I do the joins by adding this foil tape now this is stuff that they use to seal the gaps between insulation boards so I just have to have a roll of it left over from some insulating work and it seems to do a really good job of strengthening the patterns as well as leaving a really smooth surface on the outside and if we bear in mind the outside is what the sand is going to sort of conform to which essentially gives us the surface of our finished part so it's nice to have it smooth if you don't do something along these lines and you use bodgy old packaging foam like I have then you're left with a very rough surface here's how I'm making some cutouts uh, just with an old beans tin that's heated up oh, quite well So do bear in mind, most of this is quite experimental to me, um, but seems to work. So I'm just adding the risers onto the pattern. 
These help a lot as a, an escape path for the gas that's created from the vaporizing foam. Now we're just going to mix up some plaster which we're going to use to cover the whole pattern and you could be sensible and use something more like a refractory wash which is the kind of thing they recommend uh, but I've got some old plaster and I really want to crack on with this so that's what I'm using it's um, this all multi finish that's left over from a plastering job mixing it wise it's I'm making it quite thin sort of like double creamish kind of consistency and I start putting it on with a brush that's okay but I don't really think it's ideal I've used uh, a sort of stick dowly a thin bit of bit of wood basically <laughs> to put it on in the past and that's what I use again here which works a bit well remember that the outside surface is unimportant now because this plaster will not be melted by the aluminium the idea is that the aluminium solidifies at the interface between the plaster and the foil tape or where there is no foil tape the plaster and the foam so it's the inside surface where the plaster's on the foam or the plaster's on the foil which will be the the outside surface of the finished part so here they are the two end plates for the CNC machine gantry that I'm making now they need to be completely dry before pouring the aluminium so uh, these are left on a window shelf and by a radiator for a good few days doesn't really want to be any moisture in them when you pour the aluminium I hope that made sense that was making the foam patterns if you want to see the casting process itself click on the link here otherwise hope you enjoyed thanks for watching